Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the sophomore album from Kygo called Kids in Love. So I rarely talk about other critical opinions in these reviews, mostly because I don't tend to read many other reviews before I make my own, and I don't want subconscious bias creeping in. I'm gonna make a slight exception to this one here, especially in reference to Cloud9, the debut album from the Norwegian DJ and electronic producer Kygo that I reviewed last year. Now, you might not know this, but it was one of the more critically derided records of 2016, certainly accruing lower scores than many people would expect for a lightweight tropical house debut. And believe it or not, but I'm not surprised by this. Mainstream critical outlets need some punching bags to maintain a vestige of integrity. So instead of taking out on inept bro country or endlessly regurgitated trap or, God forbid, an act that other critics actually liked, why not go after a tropical house DJ little known stateside who can serve as an easy trendy target that probably won't fight back? And let me make this abundantly clear. Some criticisms of Cloud9 are pretty valid. It's over long, the quality of the guest stars is all over the place, it can feel incredibly thin lyrically at points, and overall, some of the individual songs don't stand out as much as they should. But on the flip side, it was a record that grew on me a fair bit throughout the summer of 2016, and most of that goodwill came down to Kygo himself, a sharp producer with good taste in tone and groove who knew how to build a breezy, likable vibe, which by the pretty low standards many people judged this genre was all he was looking to do, and he kind of succeeded there. Hell, the fact that it managed to get a passable performance from Julia Michaels on Carrie me should be worth noting at least it was the best song on the album. But then came 2017 and the Selena Gomez crossover that showed Kygo sharpening his talents. Not to spoil too much, but It Ain't Me is easily one of the best hit songs of 2017. And if Kygo could bring that talent for hooks to his new album Kids in Love with guest vocals from John Newman, One Republic, Ellie Goulding, and plenty more, I was actually pretty excited about this, especially as it seemed like he had tightened things up here, even despite including all of the songs from his Stargazing EP that came out earlier this year. So Okay, what did I get with Kids in Love? Well, I'm of a few minds with this project. On the one hand, I completely get why critics would subsequently dismiss Kids in Love like Cloud9. It's polished within an inch of its life, it is incredibly earnest, and a lot of the instrumental tones fit within an increasingly narrow comfort zone that some would consider lacking in some dimension. And when you consider this is supposed to be playing for Tropical House, this record's attempts at weightiness can't help but feel, well, a little bit slight. That sort of depth isn't typically expected in the genre. On the other hand, if you expected all this going in, because that's who and what Kygo is, you'll find a lot to like on Kids in Love. A streamlined record playing in big, wistful emotions without a drop of irony. That might not be a great record, but still is incredibly easy for me to revisit again and again. And the reasons why? Incredibly simple. In terms of full balance of his melodic grooves, Kygo might be one of the best EDM and Tropical House producers working in the mainstream right now. Yeah, he relies on the piano a little bit too much, but he's hitting those power chords against the big bass grooves accented by acoustic guitar, brittle snaps, and sleigh bells because his graphs of the fundamentals of a killer melody are absolutely outstanding in capturing this move, with the production picking up every pristine edge and putting it on display. Now he's fully aware that his singer is going to provide the rougher human element within the mix here, so he's working to ensure the melodies are polished to a mirror shine at the front of the mix and are balanced precisely against that groove that feels both easy but remarkably propulsive all the same. Now he'll chop and smooth out the vocals for the drops and the breakdowns, but just listen to how well timed the click of the percussion and sleigh bells balance against the melody and the groove on Riding Shotgun, or the sharper guitar line behind John Newman on Never Let You Go with that multi-tracking that might be one of the most anthemic tracks here. Well, at least until you get to the title track with Martin Johnson of Boys Like Girls, remember them? Now fronting his own pop group called The Night Game and interpolating Bob O'Reilly by The Who with those massive driving keyboards. And then there's It Ain't Me. That's it's close to the best thing that Selena Gomez has ever done, with verses that understand her limited emotional range, and a hook that utterly goes for broke in the best way possible. I am so glad that song was a hit. And while I would say this is a record that's feeling most comfortable with big emotions, you do get the more quiet, wistful touches, like the rougher huskiness from Bill Rafal on I See You against that muted bass texture, or even Ellie Goulding playing off the minor tones on first time. Even if I'm still not quite wild about that tonal choice of a drop, the song 
song really has grown on me. Of course, you'll very quickly realize that a lot of this record is playing in a very similar emotional wheelhouse. Not that it all sounds the same, Kaigo switches up the grooves and the melodic progressions too much for that to happen, but when the lyrics, they nearly all fall in the same vein of heartfelt yearning for love either there or lost, you realize so much of the strength of this record depends on who's singing, or the minor shifts to make the tracks feel a little bit more distinctive. And while it's much less of a mixed bag this time around, why Ryan Tedder thought it'd be a good idea to write a Stranger Things inspired song for, well, Stranger Things, and then references Spanish Skies on a song that sounds less 80s inspired and more like modern Coldplay. Well, it's just an anthem that never really takes off or all that works too much for me. Then you got Rob L working his Sam Smith impression on With You, and it plays for a brand of melodrama that teeters right on the edge of tolerable for me. Then you got Sunrise, which might be a little bit less inappropriately clingy than Never Let You Go, but following that song, it could have used a singer with the firepower of John Newman. And it's a similar case for Jay Hart on Permanent. When Billy Rafal hits the same emotional note in the very next song with more texture and personality, it's a little bit frustrating the lyrics didn't take the song in a bit more of a nuanced direction. And then you got the other two songs from the EP tacked on from Stargazing. And look, Justin Gesso, he does fine on Stargazing. The gooey synth melody is what kind of lets him down there, just not a lot to it. But the choice to end the record off with This Town with Sasha Sloan, which is a darker acoustic song that seems a little bit more aware of the world that she sees small town kids get married too young so she just wants to get out of town. It's something that you see played a lot sharper on a Casey Musgraves record and kind of a downbeat note to end the record. But that raises the fundamental contradiction that comes with a lot of Kygo's work. You get the feeling that his production plays best for big emotions that play with absolutely zero self-awareness like that title track and go for those big powerhouse scenes. But then you get the synthesis with the sharper writing on It Ain't Me and you find yourself wishing that more of the album was aiming for songs where the emotion was just as straight forward, just as powerful, just as big, but the framing around it was a little bit more complex. There was a little bit more going on within the song. Now granted, how much you're ever going to get that out of this subgenre of electronic music, that's up to debate. Which raises the big question about Kids in Love. Because yes, I think this is a pretty damn good record. But I also see it showing where Kaigo might be hitting a ceiling artistically if he doesn't aim a little bit higher going forward. Yes, in terms of Tropical House, there is a level of polish and anthemic power that Kaigo will always bring to the table and that I really do love. And as I said, this guy has a gift for melody. But unless he expands his sound or adds a layer of cohesive complexity to his writing, maybe through trimming down the guest star list to tighten his focus and develop more chemistry with a couple of distinct singers, maybe, I don't know, bringing in his brand of polish into a richer tapestry and selection of tones like what Avicii tries with every other project. I can see that broad earnestness though feeling a little bit tired by the next record if he doesn't switch it up, but as it is, this is a light 7 out of 10, definitely a recommendation, I enjoyed this. The appeal of this record might be simple, it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty earnest, I can see some people calling it cheesy, but screw it, when the of grooves are this good, I will take what I can get. If you're into this sort of tropical house, you could definitely do a lot worse. So yeah, check this out. So yeah, if you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys want to buy this record, I recommend you do. Link's in the description below, and I got the pull up there for all you Kygo fans. Where are you following it? This guy doesn't really seem to have much of a following. Kind of wish he would. He's a good producer. Beyond that, if you guys want to get involved in supporting this channel, link to my Patreon is right over there. Where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add records, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. And I got one thing that I should have covered a couple weeks ago, really a couple months ago, coming up next. And then yes, we will get to Taylor Swift pretty soon. But till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.